Welcome to the Fit Dad Nation podcast, forging strong fathers and raising a stronger generation. It's time to get up or shut up with your host, Steve Roy. Hey guys, this is Steve Roy, host of the Fit Dad Nation podcast. Welcome to the show. I appreciate you tuning in this week. Uh, So before we jump into the show, I want to invite all of you dads who are listening right now, I got to say, you know, when I talk about this a lot is community uh, and accountability counts for so much when it comes to uh, getting fit, especially as a busy dad. So if you don't have a tribe, if you're not part of either accountability group, you have somebody um, that you can, you know, be accountable with, it can be much more difficult to get fit or stay there. Uh, and that's actually one of the the main reasons we do pretty much everything in the Fit Dad Nation inside of groups, private groups, public groups, because it works. You know, being part of a group of like-minded men doing the same stuff, going through the same struggles that you're going through, it, it really can make the difference between success and failure. So we got a couple of groups I want to share, <clears throat> share with you. We have a free uh, private Facebook group called the Fit Dad Base Camp. We've got about 800 men in there right now, and you can apply to that group at fitdadnation.com forward slash community. Uh, And we also have our private membership program uh, that's uh, called the Fit Dad Nation Inner Circle where we do monthly challenges, and and it's really designed to keep you on track month after month after month Um, because, as you know, you know, consistency is always at the top of the list for struggles for us. So uh, you can apply to that group, fitdadnation.com forward slash community inner circle. Today's topic, I want to share some things. um, uh, I guess we'll call them, I guess we'll just call them excuses. So I started the Fidel Nation in 2014. I've been doing it ever since full time. And over those years, I've, I've talked to a lot of different men, a lot of dads, thousands, and gotten a lot of feedback, a lot of information. And I sent out dozens and dozens of surveys, feedback forms, just trying to really get a good sense of the biggest struggles in the community. And so today I want to share some uh, some of the biggest ones that I've heard and I want, I want to talk about why they're excuses. But these are ones that I've seen over and over. So it's, it's just very common. So, you know, you may hear one, two or more of them that you're like, yep, that's me. And so I want to share my thoughts as to why they're just their excuses, nothing more. And at the end of the day, the only reason you're not fit right now, barring some extreme example of, you know, you were in a bad accident or there's some serious health problem, something's going on like that, is just boils down to excuses and priorities, right? You're just not prioritizing your health, right? I'm not going to beat you up for that. You already know that you're doing that. If you're ready to change that, you know, that's why we're here at the Fit Dad Nation. Always happy to help. But I'm going to go through some of these point by point. Um, and some of these, I mean, uh, and, and I was just actually looking over spreadsheets and I have uh, just a, a wealth of information on these spreadsheets about uh, these anonymous surveys with these anonymous feedback um, uh, ideas and struggles. And uh, and so one of the things that I, I really saw over and over and over and over is the excuse of no time. And, and that's actually gotten a little bit better since this whole COVID thing. You know, a lot of people are now working at home. Some people, unfortunately, were laid off. And so that's not as much of an excuse anymore. You know, home gyms have obviously taken off, but it's still an excuse. So you just have to keep in mind that the busiest people on the planet, Elon Musk and Warren Buffett, you know, the, the busiest people on earth, the most successful, the wealthiest people that... Um, you know, stars, celebrities, uh, athletes, business owners, investors, all that, Gary Vaynerchuk, they all have the same time that we have, right? It's just how you choose to spend your time. And again, you can't use this as an excuse. I know I've, I've coached guys that have worked two jobs. They made it work, right? I, I would never say, okay, you don't really need to sleep tonight. Let's just work out. Of course not. Sleep is extremely important you know, plenty of sleep and high quality sleep. But in very, very few cases, is it is that an actual legitimate reason that you can't work out? Very few. And I'm talking, you know, one out of thousands where you just literally don't have the time. 99% of the time or more, it's just, it's just a lack of prioritizing 
fitness because there's other shit you want to do or other shit you feel like you have to do. And I said this before is, you know, I understand that you have responsibilities, you have obligations, you have a family to take care of. But if you can't even take care of yourself, how can you take care of your family the best way possible? In my opinion, you can't. You just can't operate at your best when you're not at your best. And most guys are operating probably at less than half of their best because they're just doing other stuff and not taking care of themselves mentally and physically. It's just it's just the way it is. It's just what I've seen over the years. It's just it's just that's what it is. Uh, second one is no energy. Uh, I just don't have the energy to work out. I'm tired, right? I would get up really early, walk the dog, drive to work for 45 minutes, sit at a desk for 10 hours, come home, have dinner with the family, you know, go for a short walk, and got to do it all over again, right? I get it. I lived it. Spent a long time there, over a decade doing that exact thing. I totally understand where you're coming from. And yes, it's extremely exhausting, especially for those that don't necessarily like their jobs, that aren't in a healthy, happy relationship. So these things that work in against you, they cause problems and yeah, they suck the life right out of you. So the first place you look as, as is what's toxic in your life. For me, when I was going through the shit, I had a job, a nine to five job that I, I hated. Uh, and I was in a marriage that was very unfulfilling and unhappy. So I would come home and it wasn't much better than my job. And this went on for eight years or more. And uh, it literally sucked the life out of me. And so I had no energy. I had, you know, other than my two two young daughters at the time, I didn't have much that I, I wanted to get up for. And uh, that, that that kills me when I see men like that now because I know it's it's something that you can change. It just takes a lot of strength to make the hard decisions to change some things like your job or your relationship. You know, getting divorced for me was the hardest decision I ever had to make because that, that meant I had to uh, leave my girls um, part-time. So that was extremely difficult. But um, as far as the energy, you know, uh, looking at those lifestyles and the happiness of your life and what you're going through, obviously you have to look at what are you putting in your body, right? Most of us are putting whatever we can shovel in our mouth. That's what we're eating, Whatever's thrown in front of us at dinner, right? A quick lunch at the office, whatever's in the break room. Um, you know, uh, I worked in finance for a number of years and the uh, wholesale distributors would come in and they'd bring in boxes of food like Panera or Chick-fil-A or whatever and leave it for us. And yeah, it's there. It's good. I ate it. Uh, and a lot of guys are the same way. But you have to look at the quality of your food. You know, yes, it's going to take a little more work to prepare, make better choices, you know, replace uh, maybe some of your soda with water. Yeah, you know, just make better things. But those high sugar foods, heavy processed foods, the, you know, the heavy processed carbohydrates, refined sugars, that's all sucking your energy. And so once you start cleaning up your diet, you don't have to go balls to the wall. Just replace some of that shit with vegetables and fruit, right? Eat a little more protein. You know, a couple more fibrous vegetables, nothing crazy, right? You don't have to give up everything that you love. That's ridiculous. Just start cleaning it up a little bit. Focus on, you know, more whole foods, single ingredients food, and less foods that come out of a package or a box, and your energy will improve. That coupled with consistent exercise, right, whether it's walking, training, whatever, will give you more energy. The more energy you have, obviously, the more motivated you're going to be to work out and keep going. So it's a, it's a cycle there. All right. That leads me to my next point of, I saw, I saw this pop up over and over and over. I don't have motivation. I don't, that's why I'm, that's why I'm not fit. That's why I struggle. I'm just not motivated. Again, this is obviously a big, big topic. Motivation comes and goes. It's a very temporary thing. And yeah, it can work in short-term spikes. But uh, a better solution, in my opinion, is look for inspiration to do it, not necessarily rely on motivation like watching Rocky Three or, or listening to your buddy's story about how he lost 50 pounds or going to Instagram and seeing some somebody your age that just lost a shitload of weight and looks amazing, right? Those things are pretty cool and they can last for a short while, but a much better approach would be look a little bit deeper in yourself, look inside and see why. Why do I want to be fit, right? Because you know, let's be honest, every man listening to this wants to be 
lean, fit, muscular, strong, attractive, sexy, all those things. I mean, I can't imagine there's a single guy listening to this said, nah, I'm cool, right? You, we all want that stuff, but very few of us get it. And so you have to you have to ask yourself on a deeper level, not just, hey, I want abs, or hey, I'm tired of being a fat guy. Why? Why are you tired of being a fat guy? What, how is it affecting your life negatively? Is it affecting your sex life? Is it affecting your confidence? So when you take your clothes off uh, with your wife and you're getting ready to have sex, you feel like a fat piece of shit, right? Is that is that what's happening? That does happen to a lot of men, right? There's just, there's so many things. And sometimes you really have to look. You really have to look. And I've shared my why before, but it's not as simple as I want to look good or I want to feel good. I want more energy. A lot of times you just seriously just have to keep digging. What, you know, what is it that's going to get you up when you're so used to getting up at a certain hour, doing the same routine, going through the same stuff, eating the same foods, right? Comfort foods. What is it that's going to shake up your life so much that you're going to make a few of those big changes that are going to um, create even bigger changes that are going to change the, the trajectory of your health and your life, right? What are those things? And that's a very personal thing. And I would honestly suggest spending some time kind of doing some soul searching and figuring out, you know, why am I not working? Why have I been sitting on the couch and avoiding exercise and being sedentary and eating fast food for so long? Why am I not? willing to change it right now i mean am i just lazy do i not want it what you know what is it and then you have to dig uh okay next up uh, i don't know what to do i don't know how to get started is what i hear so this is a valid point right i won't say this is an excuse although it still is an excuse because you know it, it, it comes down to you doing a little bit of research and uh due diligence but I mean, I can't fault you and I'm not here to beat you up because it's extremely overwhelming trying to figure out what the fuck is going on in this industry and how to do it right, right? Every expert has a different opinion. Celebrities, trainers, you know, Dr. Oz, every, everywhere you look, someone is telling you this is how you do it. And a lot of it is bullshit. A lot of it is even harmful. You know, you just never know what to believe. There's marketing gurus on, on social media that make it seem like their program or their diet is the be all end all and they have all the testimonials and blah 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 to back it up right so you buy it and then nothing happens because it's you know too difficult to follow or whatever right it's just it's crazy all i can say is and i teach this is start as simply as possible keep your fitness as simple as possible for the best chance of success especially when you're starting out, even me now, I've been training for 20, whatever, I don't even, I'm, I'm 50. I was started training when I was like 22. So, you know, do the math there. Um, I've been training uh, pretty consistently since then, but I would say, you know, I, I still keep things as simple as I can. And I you know I don't, I don't over complicate my stuff. Could I? Sure. Right. I mean, I've certainly built programs uh, that are pretty complicated, but at the end of the day, Honestly, you need to push, a pull, a carry, a squat, a hinge, a lunge type of movement, right? Uh, Anti-rotation in there. You know, some basic stuff is really all you need. And, and start anywhere, you know, the only, th the only caveat is really, really try to avoid jumping in too fast. You know, we as men with testosterone and egos want to relive our glory days when we were benching 315 uh, or squatting uh, 485 and we want to jump in and, and show how strong we are and the problem is we haven't worked out in 20 years and the problem is you get fucking hurt because of it and then you're out happens all the time put the ego up on the rack don't worry about it i don't care if you're lifting five pound weights start where you're at your strength is gone your mobility is gone right you you don't move well Right, you probably couldn't hold a plank for more than 30 seconds. Maybe you could do a few push-ups. Definitely not doing a pull-up. Right, this is pretty common for for middle-aged guys. Uh, you know, I see it see it all the time. So don't so don't start trying to do. How do I do more pull-ups? Don't don't even worry about that shit. Start super basic. Start by walking. Start by holding planks. Start by holding incline uh, planks, incline push-ups, low step-ups. You know, very basic stuff just to get your body moving and get your muscles going. And that's it. Like you don't need a plan. 
You don't need a detailed program, step-by-step guide, diet, everything to get started. No, not at all. Just start. You know, as long as you're not going to hurt yourself by going overboard, getting started doing something is better than nothing. All right, next up is, this is one I see a lot, is, is I'm not seeing results or I'm not seeing results quickly enough, so I quit. I mean, how many times have you personally gone through this? It's extremely common. Problem is, you know, a lot with expectations, we're, we're, we're led to believe that results can be had really, really fast with minimal work. Problem is that's all hype. It's all marketing. It's bullshit. You have to put in the work. So if you're a guy that's, you know, been sitting on your ass and not exercising consistently and eating whatever for years and years and years, just just go into it thinking, okay, it took me years to get this way. It's going to take me years to get out, right? Stop worrying about the short term. Oh my God, yesterday I was up, you know, a pound and, you know, I'm freaking out. Like, who fucking cares about that? Like, it doesn't matter. Just keep doing what you're doing. I talked about this last week. You, if you keep doing the right things for your body, meaning you're exercising consistently, you're eating a high quality diet, you're drinking a lot of water, you're getting plenty of sleep, you're getting outside fresh air and movement, stretching, right? Your body will reward you. Doesn't matter if you're going crazy with it all, if you went all in, or you're just, you know, putting your toe in a little bit. That's fine too. Your body still will reward you. Just don't go into it expecting. Well, I know, you know, last time I tried a diet, you know, it was, it's been eight years, but, you know, I lost 20 pounds in a month and now I'm only down four. So this is not working and, you know, I'm never going to, I'm never going to do it. And my, my genetics, my age, all this stuff is working against me. So fuck it. Right. No. The only way to, to fail is to quit. Right. Do not worry about how fast you're doing it. So I'm at the tail end of our 45 day challenge. I've been going strong, doing one or two days on my workouts eating a clean primal diet, drinking plenty of water, eating the right foods, moving a ton. And I'm down about 11 pounds in, um, let's, I guess about 40 days, right? And you might think, well, that's not that much. You're right. It's not. I'm, that wasn't my goal is just to shed a shitload of weight, right? I wanted to maintain some of my, my lean muscle. I was hoping just to try to shed out body fat. And that's not a huge number. That's not impressive by any stretch of the imagination. But for me, I feel 10 times better. Right, I'm not worried about dropping a massive amount of weight quickly. That's just, you know, not my goal. Nor is it something you know that I think is healthy for me. Is trying to lose a bunch of weight. I'm not a big guy as it is, and losing a whole bunch of weight wouldn't even be good for me. So, uh, don't worry about how fast you're getting results. Just keep plugging away, doing the right things for your body, and your body, even though it may be slow, will reward you. Uh, all right. So next one. Um, I've got to cut carbs. I can't cut carbs. So this is a kind of a tricky one. You know, I uh, I personally prefer going for a, a lower carb approach when you're when you're following any type of nutrition program. If your main goal is to lose fat, the reason being is carbs are the easiest to overeat. They're not inherently fattening. They're not inherently bad. Um, any macronutrient, protein, fat, carbs can make you fat. So it's not one or the other. It's a matter of when you start overeating and getting into a calorie surplus, then you know you can't lose any weight. So you have to be eating in a deficit. Uh, the easiest thing to overeat, you know, we're snacking at night, we're grabbing a handful of chips, whatever it is. Most of the time, it's carbs. And so by just scaling back some of that stuff and replacing some of the heavy starchy stuff like pasta, bread, even rice – right? The heavy, heavy stuff that has a ton of calories and not a great deal of nutritional content. You just replace it with other carbohydrates, even, you know, fruits and vegetables. You're going to save yourself a ton of calories and you're also going to get a lot more nutritional bang for your buck. So it just makes more sense. So um, that's always the first place that I look is, you know, bring the protein up and bring the carbs down. Again, this is my personal approach. Some people do extremely well with high carbs. When I was in my 20s and even early 30s, my carbs were over 50% and I was shedding weight like crazy. I mean, I couldn't keep, I couldn't keep on weight and I was eating a ton of carbs just because I was, I was training so hard and burning so much. It really worked for me. I would probably have petered out and had no energy if I was, um, eating low carbs. You know, but what I found over the years is, you know, most, I would say a lot of middle-aged guys that have, 
you know, 20, 30, 40 plus pounds to lose that are used to eating the standard American diet, which is absolute shit, benefit from bringing their carbohydrate intake down, thus cutting out some of the bullshit that they're eating, the the packages, the crackers, the cookies, right? Um, The breads, the sodas, sweet teas, and replacing it just with good old fashioned fruits and vegetables, you're going to start losing weight because you're going to cut out a shitload of calories. You're going to get more nutrition and you're going to feel better. And uh, it's, you know, it, it's just such a great cycle too, because once that starts happening and you start cutting calories and you start losing weight and st- seeing results and feeling better, actually feeling better energy wise, sleeping better, it's just a, a snowball and it, and it just keeps building and building. And that's how you just get on a roll and you don't want to stop. And that's exactly where you want to be. Uh, let's talk about, I have to give all the foods that I love if I go on a diet. So diet is just, it's a negative word. People con it. It's, it's got a connotation of being a negative thing. It's a temporary thing. I have to diet. I have to go on a diet, right? You know, I, I really try to stay away from that, uh, as much as I can. I prefer a pr- approach to what, you know, what's your approach to eating like, um, you can do nutritional program, you know, whatever th- it might be. But, you know, if you think that you have to give up everything that you love, to go on a diet and lose weight. I think that's the wrong way to look at it. Are you going to have to make some sacrifices? Yes. You can't keep eating the way you're eating and expect anything to change because if you're not changing your diet, what, you know, nothing's going to change. You have to make some sacrifices, but do you have to give up everything? Of course not. If you're somebody that can handle a little bit of moderation, uh, by all means, go right ahead. I'm personally not. I'm an all or nothing person. It's just me personally. I don't teach that. That's just how I found that I am. So when I go all out, as in like, all right, you know, I'm in a, I'm in a, this, and this happened relatively recently, and you know, I'm kind of in a, a bad place emotionally and, and mentally, and uh, I'm going to, I'm going to cover it up with some shitty food. Yeah. I mean, I, I have no problems going to Cheesecake Factory and downing a huge plate of, uh, you know, chicken Alfredo followed by, an entire piece of Oreo cheesecake, you know, probably, you know, 3000 calories or more in that, you know, well more, you know, far more than I need for the day. And that's one meal. No problem doing that. Um, and that's, you know, that's a lot of us have that mentality. And, and so I am somebody that's like, okay, this is, this is my goal. This is my plan. And I don't want a bite of that cheesecake because I know if I have a bite, you know, it's going to be extremely tempting to have another one. But, you know, if you're someone that can handle moderation, absolutely, absolutely do that. I think that makes a lot of sense. But just keep in mind that the best thing that you can do as far as your diet, it's not any particular approach. It's find something that works for you, meaning it's getting you results, i.e., you know, losing fat or whatever the results that you want. It's healthy. It's actually healthy. Okay, don't go on a cookie diet. You will lose weight on just a cookie diet, but it's terrible for you. And most importantly, it's sustainable. You have to be able to stick with it long term. I've talked about this so much. So whatever that whatever that means, that's okay. If it means having uh, one soda every other day instead of three a day, that's absolutely fine for you, right? If it's working for you, you're getting results, you can sustain it. Absolutely. I don't think that, oh, man, I can never have a Coke again. Yeah, I mean, every once in a while, I'll have something now um, like that. And, you know, usually it tastes terrible now when your taste buds start to change and you get used to eating healthy foods. All those processed foods and fast foods taste horrible. Problem is for most of us, and I've been, like I said, I've been there many times, you get to a place where all of those those foods taste amazing. And healthy foods are bland and boring and you don't want to eat them. So the goal is to kind of switch switch the tables where uh, you actually look forward to eating healthy foods and it tastes good. And if you have a bite of someone's McDonald's cheeseburger, it tastes like a piece of cardboard. That's kind of the goal behind that. Lastly, I'll just talk about beer slash alcohol. And and I'm not going to fault anybody. I mean, obviously, we're dads, we're beer drinkers. I'm not much of a drinker, but I was. But guys don't want to give up their beer. And I'm not saying that you have to, right? I mean, because let's face it, you know, guys go out, they go to games, whatever. This It's a very, very social thing. And that's a huge part of men's lives. 
the social social interaction. And so giving that up doesn't really work for a lot of men. All I'm going to say is there's a lot of empty calories in alcohol and beer. And so if you're struggling to lose weight, you don't know why you, you know, you're eating healthy or training hard, but you're not losing weight. There's always uh, the first place to look is liquid calories or, and, or alcohol and beer. It's an easy place to clean up calories. I have friends that drink every day, right? They'll have drink or two on the weekends. They'll have six or seven or 10 or 12, right? That shit adds up, right? You can wipe out a deficit, a calorie deficit you've been doing so well all week, watching your food, eating a lot of protein, drinking a lot of water. Weekend comes, oh, it's a barbecue, it's a brisket, it's some potato salad. And then there's a bunch of beer sitting there. And you, you know, before you know it, you've got eight of them in you, right? That's a, that's a dick ton of calories, right? That could easily wipe out your, your weekly deficit. And then you're like, fuck, I worked so hard all week. I just, you know, splurged a little bit on the weekend and I'm not losing any weight. What the fuck? And that's a part of the problem too, is you gotta, you gotta look at the, the, the bigger picture of consistency, looking at that deficit and just remember that it is very easy to wipe out a deficit with just even one day of overeating and just drinking a ton of calories. So, you know, again, no need to quit. I wouldn't say you need to quit drinking by any means. Ideally, if you, if you're very, very serious about getting in shape, losing weight, I would definitely would cut it back to as much as you can. If you, as much as you can and save those calories for high quality food versus just straight alcohol or beer, which has nothing in it that's helping you. But, you know, again, this is a very touchy subject. Guys do not want to give up their drinks. They do not want to give up their beers. Fuck off, Steve. I'm going to do what I want to do. I get it. I totally understand. Um, I'm just saying, look there. If you're struggling to lose weight, stop using that um, as an excuse. It, look at look at your alcohol consumption. Okay, a lot of times it's it's right there. Anyway, guys, I can go on and on. I want to cut it off here. Hopefully, this has helped. Hopefully, some of these have resonated with you. And uh, oh, as always, find me on social at the Fit Dad Nation. I'll catch up with you guys next week. Thanks for joining us. And remember, if you want more information, check out the Fit Dad Basecamp group on Facebook. And don't forget to stop by fitdadnation.com. Until next time, keep kicking ass and taking the next step. You can do this, Dad.